morning uh, here we have superheat Rankine cycle this is a superheat Rankine cycle okay so this part will be looking at superheat Rankine cycle so in your superheat Rankine cycle as compared to the uh, earlier one that is your Rankine cycle what you have here is a superheater so what happens is the steam from the boiler as it enters the turbine it will be sent back to the boiler for superheating so after that then only it will send to the steam turbine now the purpose of superheating is to improve the quality of the steam at this point here okay the point two here that is to improve the quality of the steam to improve the quality of the steam okay to improve the quality of the steam and then when you refer to point one here okay the steam is being superheated to a temperature of T superheated at boiler pressure so the superheating process goes according to the constant pressure process so until it reaches the superheated temperature then it undergoes isentropic expansion to point two so as compares to the previous one where you have a vertical line okay straight down from this point here point six vertically downwards up to this point so you can see my laser pointer so up to this point here and as compared to point two that after superheating you can see actually the quality of the steam has been slightly improved because it's much closer to the dryness fraction one that is the dry saturated curve or line okay <clears throat> so the purpose is to improve the quality of the steam one two to improve the efficiency the overall or the uh, cycle efficiency so state point one to state point two the steams will undergo undergo isentropic expansion then from point two to three it will undergo constant pressure cooling or heat rejection and then at point three it is being saturated liquid and then up to point four where it goes to into the pump okay the vapor pump where it undergoes isentropic compression then the steam is sent or the uh, liquid is sent to 0.5 here okay as it enters the boiler becomes saturated liquid then at constant pressure heating up to the superheated temperature okay so from point one to two you will have your work output two to three you will have your heat rejected three to four you will have your work input and four to one here you have your heat supply so in order to in other words if let's say for example we want to find h1 then we must have a superheated temperature and the pressure the boiler pressure in order to find out state point one so at state point one what you need is find out the enthalpy at point one and find out the entropy at point one as well so it will undergo isentropic expansion until it reaches point two so at point two you will have to equate s1 with s2 which is to be the same okay so this is s1 equals to s2 okay not s2 equals to s3 s1 equals to s2 okay so from s2 which you have known which is equals to s1 you can use the formula of sf plus x sfg to find out the dryness fraction once you have found the dryness fraction you can substitute it into the equation of h2 equals to hf plus x hfg so you can find out your h2 then at state point three you have your saturated liquid so actually h3 is equal to the hf at the condenser pressure and then you have point four okay 
Point four, you can use a, a formula, uh, which is uh, equals to zero point zero zero one. Okay, multiplied by the pressure difference. Okay, between the boiler pressure and the condenser pressure, then times ten to the power five, then plus H three, you will be able to find out H four. Because according to our property tables, we won't be able to find point four here because it's outside of the saturated liquid line. Okay, so basically when you look at this, this is your feed pump. Okay, so set uh, liquid or saturated liquid goes into the feed pump where it undergoes isentropic compression and it enters a boiler. So in the boiler, it will undergo constant pressure heating, then steam generated going out and then going into the turbine at 0.6, then it is sent back to the boiler for superheating and then coming out at 0.1. Okay, that is superheated. Okay, so then it undergoes isentropic expansion through the steam turbine and work is being extracted here. Okay, or power generated over here in the turbine where it undergoes when it undergoes isentropic expansion. Then it goes out of the turbine at state point two, then goes into the condenser. This is the condenser where it undergoes condensation process to point three here. That is your point three. Yeah. And the point three is here. Okay. So you can take a look at the diagram. So how the things flow. Okay. And then here I have given you the way of finding out every enthalpy, every each enthalpy at each stick point. Okay. From the property table, H1 is equal to Hg at the superheated temperature and boiler pressure. Then you find out your S1, which is equal to S2, which is the isentropic expansion. So S1 should be equal to S2, but now S2 is sitting on the condenser pressure line. Then you can use the formula S1 or S2, S1 or S2, okay, to find out the dryness fraction X here, the dryness fraction X here. So when, uh, how you find SF and the S with the subscript of FG, then you have to refer to your property table based on the condenser pressure, based on the condenser pressure. Then once you have found the dryness fraction, then now you can substitute into this formula here to find out your H2. Your HF again is referring to the condenser pressure and HFG also referring to the condenser pressure. The X, that is the dryness fraction, substitute into the equation, then you will be able to find out your H2. The H3 at this point here is actually equal to the HF, H with subscript F at the condenser pressure. So you can determine or determine all these values here or find out this, all these values here by using your property table. Then your H4, that is work input. So you have your H3 just now, okay? Then plus 0 0.001. So this 0 0.001 is actually the specific volume of saturated liquid. And we usually consider this value here as a constant because we consider that, okay, water, saturated water is almost incompressible is almost incompressible. So incompressible means there will be no changes in volume. So that is why we can take this value here as a constant. So you can refer to your property table as usual for this value at condenser pressure. Okay, so then multiply by PB here is the boiler pressure minus this is the condenser pressure 
multiply by 10 to the power of 2, not 10 to the power of 5. 10 to the power of 5 unless you want this to be in juice per kg or you want the enthalpy to be in juice per kg, then you can multiply by this, this by 10 to the power of 5 instead of 10 power of 2. And since we want the enthalpy as in terms of kilojoules per kg, that is why it's only 10 to the power of 2. Because bar is 10 to the power of 5, 10 to the power of 5 to kilo, which is 10 to the power of 3, so you have to multiply by another 10 power 2 here. So then you can find out your H4. So once you have found out your H4, then you can find out your heat supply simply by taking H1 minus H4. And then you can find out your work output by taking H1 minus H2. Okay, then the heat rejected H2 minus H3 and the work input as H4 minus H3. Okay, thank you. That is all for this section. Okay. We continue in the next slide. Thank you. Subscribe and like, please.